I probably don't need to introduce what pressure is considering you clicked on this video, so let's get straight into it. Let's say you've either just started or want to start getting into pressure, but the files aren't helping or the other guides you've seen just don't give you enough info. That's where I come in. I'll try and help, no matter how obvious the help may be, and get you out of the game with ease and with my tips. We'll separate this into multiple categories. Neutral, Hostile, Node, Environment, and Grand. Mr. Lopey is an entity that will track you down and then jump scare you if you clip out of bounds or are too far behind your teammates. He usually does about half health and has no file attached to him. And the tip is to, well, stay close to your friends and be careful when walking through doors. These guys can be found in lockers, coming in a variety of different colors from red to green and others, but usually purple. They attack you and briefly hold you in the locker, damaging you until someone finds you, but if you're running solo, they instant kill you. My tip is to look in the ventilation spaces in the lockers whenever you enter a room, and also look for the eyes. If you're going to go in one, make sure to listen for any noise, and if there is noise, don't enter it. Usually Squirtle spawns in dark rooms or after node monsters pass, and can spawn in a variety of faces, some being the white face from I'm Scared or even Cassidy from FNAF. They usually only attack the player when they stand by it for too long, or when flashed with a source of light, like a flashlight or a lantern. My tip is to look for any silhouettes when in the dark, and back away when you hear this audio cue. Same goes for when you have a light. In dark rooms, it's safer to use a flashlight as it's quicker and less risky to use compared to a lantern. They thankfully don't instant kill you, but do quite a bit of damage. Also, a black light is a safe option, as it doesn't trigger them. The good people are these silly little meat blobs that sit behind mimic doors. So when you see, or don't, more than one door, be cautious as they deal about half of your health when you try and enter their door. My tip is, well, the most common way to figure out which door is real is to go up and listen for breathing that sounds like this. But there's a few other ways, too. There's another common way to look for the good people, which is to look for sparking on the visual displays like this. But one that I use quite frequently, which is less common, is to look for scan lines, like here. Usually the scan lines will be visible on the top or bottom of the screen, which shows it's just a projection from the painter. These will randomly spawn in rooms and sway side to side, with lasers and a spotlight showing where they're looking. Thankfully somewhere in the room there's a lever that you can pull to turn them off. My tip is to crouch when getting close to them as your hitbox is obviously lessened when crouching, and another way is to alert it and then hide behind something so it wastes ammo, and for a brief period, it'll go back into its hold or reload before coming back out, giving you some time to run for the lever or the door. This includes such things as fire, electricity, pits, holes, ventilation fans, and steam. There's honestly not much to this. You just gotta watch your step, make sure you see where you're going, and time your movement with steam and electrical fans. When underwater, if you go away from the light, parasites will start damaging you. You can either shake them off by moving your mouse quickly, or simply by going back into the light. Not much to do this. During the ridge, there will be spots with speakers. Do not get close to them, or it'll make your PDG start beeping. And once it stops, you die. Same goes for underwater areas where walls are missed. Go too far out and you'll die. When underwater, simply just stay on the path forward, and when in the ridge, look around for the door, and if the speaker's near the door, simply just book it through and out the door and get away from the speaker. The angler is a node entity, which means it will follow a set path instead of roaming. The lights will flicker and make a noise while doing so. Get in the locker, and shortly after, he will rush through and then despawn after reaching the nearest unopened door. When the lights flicker, don't immediately get in the locker. Instead, wait until you hear him getting worryingly close, then get in. Exit about a second or two after he passes, 
and just like all the nodes, you can go into a separate room or a part that is not in their path. All node entities instantly kill you if they're in your path. Froger is just like Angler, lights flicker and all, but instead he doubles back. Once he reaches the nearest unopened door, they will rush back to where they spawned, then go back to the nearest door again, rushing about two times. When he passes to go back where he spawned, get out of the locker to prevent getting kicked out when it comes back. Then when you hear him again, go back in. Instead of the lights flickering, Pinky will emit a blood-curdling scream that can be heard across the map. you would with Angler. Wait for the scream to get louder until entering the locker. Chainsmoker will flick at the lights, but he is much slower than the other four nodes. He produces a light green gas that cuts your time in the locker by half if not more. Instead of waiting for the noises to get louder, wait for your screen to shake. Then get in the locker. As if you get in too early, he'll teleport you to his, well, weird world. Blitz is extremely fast and will flicker the lights twice when he's about to rush. When the lights flicker twice, don't wait to get in the locker. Get in the locker immediately and he'll soon pass by extremely fast. When multi monsters about to attack, they'll produce a slightly glitchy static noise. Don't get this confused with the static noise that a keycard emits. Then when they're about to strike, a phrase in red text will appear at the bottom of the screen that tells you it's coming. You have immediately less than three seconds to get in a locker at this point. As soon as you hear the static, wait by the locker. When the red text appears, immediately enter. There's a super rare chance he can spawn, and only spawns in one specific room. If he does spawn, simply don't touch him. Th that's it. In rooms with open ocean windows, Ifestation can possibly spawn, forcing you to look at him, and damaging you in the process. If you have a flash beacon, do not use it! It will anger them and do more damage and be in every single ocean window. Sometimes you can see a flash of Ifestation when opening a room, simply look down and have enough space to look away when this happens. Or, you can hide in a locker until your teammate opens the next door. Wall Dwellers can spawn in almost any room and will peel out of the wall and slowly stalk you until they reach you and eventually kill you. My tip is, first of all, they make a distinct peeling audio when they spawn, so keep an ear out, like this. Then of course, their footsteps are very loud. The easy way to counter them is to just turn around and look at them, but if you want to one-up that, you can wait until a node like Angler comes by and kills them, giving you a delicious Dweller chunk to feast on so you can heal. While the lights flicker just like the Angler, Chainsmoker, Blitz, and Froger, he doesn't have a set path. Instead, he wanders around until he sees someone, or gets impatient. But warning, he sees you in the lockers. If he sees you out of the locker, get in one immediately or he'll instantly kill you. Instead of passing, he'll put you in a minigame where you have to keep your cursor in the middle of the circle. Make sure you have enough room for your mouse and beware of his attacks, because he shakes your mouse violently sometimes. Like node entities, he also can't see in certain parts of the rooms, so you can use that to your advantage. The searchlights have four main beacons of light when they hover around. If you're caught in it for a few seconds, you die instantly. There's honestly not much to say. Lockers work to stable hiding places, and you can easily hide behind boxes or shelves in the first encounter. But in the second, it's easy to just use the ability to go up and down and left and right to your advantage. So it's easy to maneuver through the games easily. Otherwise known as the Trench Bleeder, she doesn't really serve much of a threat to be honest, apart from in the secret encounter where she can, well, crush you. The best way to avoid dying in the secret encounter is just hurry up and stay in the crevices, don't resurface until she's passed. And in the final encounter, just make sure not to get crushed when she steps on the searchlights.
So, that's all for the main entities you encounter. I hope you learned a lot of information, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!